Hi, I'm Semen Yaakov. This presentation is entitled An Extended Model of the Equivalent Resistor in LLC Converters. The presentation is based on two key papers, one by Professor Steigerwald, a comparison of half-bridge resonant converter topologies that was published in 1988, and the other one is an approximate analysis of the resonant LCL, which is a LLC DC-DC converter by myself and co-authors. Now, links for download for these two papers are available at the description section of this video at a YouTube. Okay, what is an LLC converter? It is a resonant converter, which is based on a switcher, could be a full bridge as shown here, or half bridge, which is generating a square wave. This is fed to a resonant circuit, which is composed of two inductors plus a capacitor, L1 and L2, a transformer, which is in parallel to one of the inductors, and then there is a rectifier, could be a full wave rectifier as shown here, or halfway, and then a filter capacitor and a resistor, which actually represent the load. By using two inductors, you can narrow the range of frequency that you need in order to regulate the output voltage. This circuit, as shown here, can be analyzed for large signal and actually can be simulated in the time domain or transient large signal by, say, SPICE or any other simulator. That is, to see the actual waveform, the square wave, the sinusoidal waveform, etc. However, in many cases, we would like to have a way to simulate the AC or small signal uh, behavior of the circuit. In this case, we would like to feed a AC, it's a phasor type excitation, and get the behavior of the system. In this case, we cannot use this nonlinear part here. This is the rectifier, which is nonlinear, and an AC analysis is for linear circuit. So in order to be able to run it in an AC analysis or do a AC analysis uh, analytically, uh, you do have to replace this nonlinear part by some linear part and conveniently this, this is done by putting an RAC which is an equivalent resistor that represents the loading effect of the output of the rectifier and the load. Okay, so this is the RAC that we are going to talk about. How to calculate it, how to get it uh, to represent correctly the loading of the output section. The original work by uh, Steigerwald in 1988, which has been used ever since, is based on the idea that you have in this circuit actually a, you have a current source which orin originates from the a resonant circuit. This current is fed to the rectifier, uh, rectified, and then you have an average current DC going into the load. So here we have a DC output voltage, and this is a DC current. Now the relationship between this DC current and this pulsating current, or the original sine wave current, is really very simple. Once you know the peak value, you know the average, and then you know the RMS if you like to have it, and we need to have it. So there is a relationship between the AC current here, this is the RMS value already, and the DC coming out of the output. This goes through this relationship that IP is related to the RMS AC, and I out is of course 2 pi, 2 over pi IP. So we have now a relationship between the AC current RMS and the DC current at the output. Now if we look at these two lines, we look at the voltage, we'll see a square wave. Why is that? Because when say this diode is conducting and this diode is conducting, we see the output in this polarity. 
However, when this diode is conducting and this diode is conducting, we see the output in the reverse polarity. So here we see a square wave, which is uh, with the maximum value of the DC voltage at the output. Now, real power is a product of a current and a voltage at the same frequency. Now, a square wave, of course, contains many frequencies, so we need to take the first harmonics of this square wave. And there is a relationship, of course, between the square wave and the first harmonic, and therefore, the AC of the first harmonic is related to this DC at the output, which is the square wave here, by this factor. Okay? Now we have the AC voltage here. This is the first harmonics. We have the AC current here, and the ratio between the, these, that is the AC voltage over the AC current, is actually a, uh, say, a virtual uh, resistor. This is this RAC resistor. And if we take these relationships and we sort of divide them out, we find out that the RAC is equal to 8 over pi squared, which is about 10 RL. RL now is this resistor. And it came about because here we have the ratio between E out and I out. These are DC values. So this work. Um, actually showed how to calculate RAC once you know RL with this very simple factor. And then if you put it in the circuit here, this RAC, you can run an AC analysis or AC uh, simulation, small signal simulation uh, on this circuit. However, there is a problem here. The relationship that we have just seen is strictly correct only at the resonance. In this case, the inductor current will be in phase with the square wave with it generated by the bridge or the half bridge. Um, and then we'll see a nice halfway sinusoidal waveform. This is the rectifier current, and this is the rectifier current on the output side. However, if the frequency is above resonant, we're going to see a phase shift of the current, and therefore the output current after rectification will not look like a half a sine wave, but it's sort of shifted. There is a phase shift and a cutoff of the current at the transition point. So we have a problem that the waveform is really not a half a sine wave. The situation is even worse when we walk below resonance. Below resonant, we have a leading effect of the current. So in this case, this will be the shape of the inductor current. And at the output, what we're going to see is indeed sort of a half sine wave. However, it ends before half of the period. That is, the angle here is less than 180 degree. This is the 180 degree here, and it ends here. So obviously, this does not fit the calculation that I've, we have seen before, and therefore, if you use uh, this RAC for this particular case, you may have a problem here, and it may not be accurate. Let me just point out that there is a difference between operating at above frequency or below frequency. Above frequency, we are going to have a zero voltage switching. I'm not going into it, but it's important to understand that or to know that. To know that. While when we work below resonance, we are going to have a zero current switching. That is, we switch with zero current at a bridge or half bridge. Normally, when you use MOSFETs, we like to have a zero voltage switching. And if you use IGBTs, we may wish to have a zero current switching. So these are two areas that you can work at with the LLC. Let me just summarize the RAC point here. Strictly speaking, the RAC is correct for this situation, for operating with the switching frequency at resonance. Above resonance, it's sort of approximately okay. However, below resonance, it's really 
quite different, I mean, the waveform are quite different from what we have assumed when we have extracted the RAC. So the purpose of this work here that I'm describing is to actually find what is the RAC in this situation. So here it is. This is half of the period, 180 degree here. This lambda is the angle of conduction at the output after rectification. These are the diodes current, okay? So in the CCM, continuous current mode, we have 180 degrees. In the DCM, this continuous current mode, we have a lambda which is less than pi or less than 180 degree. Here, by the way, we see the square wave at the input. And here is the reflected uh, voltage from the rectifiers. Now here it's sort of missing part here because there is no conduction, so the diodes are not conducting, so therefore we are not seeing the full output voltage uh, at these points. So without going into too much mathematical derivation, which turns out to be quite complex here, let me just say that we can calculate, or it's possible to calculate, the angle. However, it turns out that the calculation depend or the result depends as to whether the angle is small or large, okay? And therefore, we get actually two solutions. And as an approximation, we are going to use the, we are going to use the average of these two solutions, that is half of lambda 1 plus lambda 2. Now note that for lambda, we have now all these values here, that, which are known. It is the frequency, the L, the R, etc. So we can calculate lambda 1, we can calculate lambda 2, and then get lambda. Okay? Now, here we're showing how good is this approximation. Okay? This is lambda, and this is now frequency, and this is for different uh, this is for L1 over L2.5, just a certain design of the LLC converter. And this is for a parameter B. Let me just go back. B is defined here. This is just uh, N square, which is the turns ratio of the transformer, output resistor, and square root of C over L1. So for different Bs, uh, what we see here, the solid line is the calculated value by the model. The dots are by simulation, time domain, transient simulation, point by point, and, and looking at the uh, lambda at the angle. And there is a very good fit between these two. Now, interesting enough, above resonance, as you can see, we are going to have um, 180 degrees. This is lambda over pi is 1, and that is correct. That is above resonance, we have conduction angle of above 180 degrees, depending on the B, as you can see, somewhat. And then below resonance, the angle is smaller, that is, lambda over pi is smaller. Here is another look at the same information, in a different cut. Uh, this is now for 2L1 over L2, this is 1, this is 0.3, so it's, again, different design. This is lambda, again, above frequency, we are going to have 180 degrees, and below uh, the angle will be smaller. So there's a good fit between the calculation of lambda and the actual simulation of a time domain, uh, cycle by cycle, as we call it. Once we know lambda, we can calculate the RAC or R equivalent that we call it for DCM and CCM. So this is a combined expression which here, uh, we are using also the turns ratio of the transformer. That is, we are looking at the primary of the transformer. R out is the output uh, resistor. Lambda is the one that we have calculated. And this is the expression here. And you can compare it to the CCM, or only CCM case, in which lambda is pi. And this is this Steigerwald expression. Again, there is an addition here of n squared because we are looking from the primary of the transformer. Okay, so how good is this approxim approximate analysis or how good is this value for our AC? So here are some, uh, on the one hand, we have model calculation. This is the solid line, okay? 
However, the dots are actually experiments with an uh, actual uh, resonant converter, LLC converter. And as you can see, there's a very good agreement. This is uh, resonant here is 170. So this is below resonant and above resonant, and the fitting is very good. Here's another look at the same information. This is a more familiar uh, resonant type response. Here now is the frequency. Earlier we had here the resistance. Earlier we had here the load resistor, which is changing. While here we have the frequency, uh, and uh, this will be about the resonant frequency here. This is 117 that we've seen before. And again, these are for L1 over L2.5 for two loads, and this is for L1 over 2, 1.22. And again, uh, we have here two loads and the dots are experimental result. It is a real converter that was running and the, the uh, output to input voltage was actually measured. So um, it's a tedious experiment, but anyhow, we see that there is a very good agreement uh, as far as experiment goes between the experimental results and the model calculation. So the question is, of course, how significant is the correction? I mean, uh, do we have to use it or is it good enough to use the old uh, uh, good uh, approximation uh, by a Steigerwald for the DCM2? So I've taken an example for lambda is 90 degrees. That is a DCM below resonance and the angle of conduction at the output is 90 degree half of the 180 okay so if we use the expression that we have found here in this uh, work it would come out to be 0.526 however if we use the ccm uh, expression this tiger rod we find that this is this is just normalized we have 8 over pi square which is about uh, 0.8 so there is a quite a difference between these two okay there is a mathematical uh, point here that i like to maybe emphasize and show in the case of 180 degree that is when lambda is 180 degree when you plug in the 180 here the lambda would be pi okay uh, there is a seem to be a problem because if lambda is pi this is pi over pi square is one 1 minus 1 is 0, and then cosine of lambda, which is again 180 over 2, which is 90 degree, this is 0, 2, so this is 0 over 0. Uh, to get the value, of course, to, you have to get the limit of this expression, which comes to be 0.8, uh, as it should be. So this is kind of interesting. This is for the 180 degree case. There is, however, some hidden problem here, which uh, I like to point out and explain. In the case of the R equivalent by the old and uh, very useful and highly uh, In the case of the RAC or R equivalent uh, uh, derived by Steigerwald, we have a fixed value here, which is a function of R out. And it's just a, it's a coefficient here, uh, and this is the number of turns of the transformer. Here, however, we have a function of this lambda. And as it turns out, according to analysis that uh, we have made, this lambda is a function of omega, that is the switching frequency. So for each frequency, our equivalent is indeed different. So you just cannot plug in a value here and uh, run the simulation, say, because um, our equivalent is a function of the operating point. As you sweep the frequency, our equivalent is actually changing. Now, this can be overcome in, say, SPICE or any other simulator by using a behavioral model that will make our equivalent a function of frequency. That is, you can actually on the fly, as you sweep the frequency, you can calculate the lambdas, plug it in, 
calculate the area equivalent for each of the frequencies that you are passing through. So this can be done, but it is important to understand that this is not a fixed value, but a rather a value which is changing with frequency. So this actually brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it interesting and it may be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.